This is episode 8 of Shark Lore. How the episodes go is I'll discuss each species within a family per episode. I'll provide maximum length, how deep they can swim, their diet, mode of reproduction, and any other additional facts worth talking about. So this episode we're looking at the Erectolobiforms, otherwise known as the carpet sharks. So their defining characteristics is they are often benthic, meaning they lay on the bottom of the ocean and will ambush their prey by camouflaging with their beautiful carpet-like patterns. The blue-gray carpet shark, or Brachialurus calchloe, these small sharks grow up to two and a half feet and lack their blue-gray color. Their color is actually closer to brown and purple, but scientists have never been good with their colors anyways. They dive no deeper than 330 feet and often cruise along the soft, sandy bottom, feeding on invertebrates and bony fish. They have nasal barbells, and fishermen believed they were blind because they shut their eyes when taken out of the water, but they're not actually blind. For reproduction, the eggs hatch inside of the mother with no placenta, so a placental viviparous, producing six to seven pups per litter. They are fairly uncommon, but are occasionally in aquariums because they are completely harmless to humans. The blind shark, or Brachialurus wadi, is not even blind. These sharks are very similar to blue-gray carpets in their story, except a bit smaller at around 2.1 feet in length, and swim down to around 460 feet, producing up to 8 pups, and often live in tidal pools. They can survive for a few hours out of the water, and don't mind the rocky environment. The speckled carpet, or Hemicillum trispecular, grows up to two feet in length and has oviparous reproduction. They have two distinct black spots near the pectoral fins to give it that speckled name. The hooded carpet, or Hemicillum strahani, grows up to two feet in length, about one centimeter shorter than the speckled shark, and has oviparous reproduction. The Indonesian speckled carpet shark, or Hemicillum fraisinetti, grows up to 1.5 feet in length and hangs out in the shallow reefs, sandy, and grassy substrates with an unknown max depth, and for reproduction, they are oviparous and have smaller black spots behind the pectoral fins as well. The barbell throat carpet shark, or Cirrocillum expolitum, grows up to one feet in length, has oviparous reproduction, and dives at around depths between 590 to 623 feet. The saddle carpet shark, or Cirrocillum japonicum, grows up to 19 inches in length and has oviparous reproduction with the depth between 820 to 950 feet. The Taiwan saddled carpet, or Cirrocillum formosanum, grows up to 15 inches in length, has oviparous reproduction, and the depth is around 360 feet. The collared carpet shark, or Paracillum collaire, grows up to 2.8 feet in length and is found around depths between 66 to 755 feet and as well has oviparous reproduction. The elongated carpet, or Paracillum elongatum, has only one specimen no known that was found in southwestern Australia, and it was in the stomach of a school shark. The length was around 16.6 inches and likely has oviparous reproduction, caught at a depth of around 160 feet. The rusty carpet shark, or Paracillum ferruginium, they are fine in the rocky reefs or seagrass beds and have oviparous reproduction, with their depth between 16 to 492 feet, and feed on crustaceans and mollusks for their diet. The ginger carpet, or Paracillum sparsimaculatum, grows up to 2.56 feet in length, has oviparous reproduction, and swims at depths of around 669 to 804 feet, and all of this was only known from three known specimens. The necklace carpet, or Paracillum variolatum, is found around sand, rock, coral reefs, kelp, and seagrass beds at depths of around 590 feet, 
They grow up to just under three feet, and it has a black color that looks like a necklace. For reproduction, they are oviparous with tendrils that hook to the ocean floor. So the eggs will hook to the ocean floor to not be carried away by the water current. Next up, we'll be looking at the walking shark, epaulet shark, Hemicillum oscillatum. They're easy to identify from the large black spot near the pectoral fins like a military epaulet. They get no bigger than 3.3 feet and dive no deeper than 160 feet. The diet consists of marine worms, crustaceans, bony fish, and uses its buccal cavity to suck in prey. For reproduction, the mother lays eggs, so it is oviparous, producing several pairs of egg capsules. They often thrive in tide pools with a couple of cool abilities. They adapted to survive longer without oxygen, capable of going three hours with low oxygen and one hour with no oxygen at all. They don't swim very often and prefer walking on the ocean floor, so they may be the first sharks to walk on land. They're also fearless around humans and make great aquarium pets because the worst they can do is nip you. The sender wasp epaulet or Hemicillum gale grows up to 1.8 feet in length and walks at around 82 feet. They've been observed swimming and walking but not observed eating and likely have oviparous rep reproduction. The Papuan epaulet or Hemicillum haustrumi grows up to two and a half feet and walks at around 49 feet down. For reproduction, they're oviparous with paired eggs and the diet is unknown. The Halmahera epaulet or Hemicillum halmahera grows up to 2.3 feet in length presumably in shallow water, walking on the ocean floor with their pectoral fins. For reproduction, they are likely oviparous with paired eggs with an unknown diet. The Triton epaulet, or Hemicillum henry, grows up to 2.6 feet in length and walks down 98 feet. Diet consists of bony fish and benthic invertebrates and has oviparous reproduction. The Leopard epaulet, or Hemicillum michaeli, grows up to 2.3 feet in length and swims down around 65 feet. For reproduction, they are likely oviparous with paired eggs and the diet is unknown. There is possibly a Seychelles epaulet, but nothing is known about it yet. So next we will look at the wabagong sharks, like the tasseled wabagong, or Eucrocerhinus dasipogon. These strange-looking sharks have the word wobegong in Australian Aboriginal language meaning shaggy beard. This gives them great camouflage with the mouth tassels appearing to be coral for bony and cartilaginous fish to hide in, only to get ambushed quickly. They feed on just about any small animal that gets too close to their mouth. This species grows up to 5.9 feet in length, with a likely false claim of a specimen being 12 feet. They rest down at around 160 feet at the bottom of the ocean, spending their time near coral reefs to blend in and barely move. They are so still, they'll let tiny animals crawl on them until larger prey is attracted to the smaller prey to attack them. For reproduction, they are actually aplacental viviparous and will bite humans if they are stepped on. The banded or gulf wobegong or erectolobus haley grows up to nine and a half feet in length and rests down to 640 feet. Diet likely consists of bony and cartilaginous fish and benthic invertebrates with ovoviviparous reproduction. The floral banded wobegong or erectolobus floridus only grows up to 2.4 feet the smallest wobegong species, and rests down at around 279 feet with diet and reproduction unknown and may be different due to its size. The western wobegong or Erectolobus hutchinsi was researched that it was researched on it that wobegongs have larger spiracles and ampullae of Lorenzini to help utilize hunting without moving. 
They grow up to 4.9 feet and swim down to around 348 feet with diet probably being the typical ovoviviparous reproduction with females able to store sperm for up to six months and produce around 23 pups per litter. The Japanese wobegong, or Erectolobus japonicus, grows up to 3.3 feet, swims down to 656 feet. Diet is typical and has ovoviviparous reproduction with 20 pups per litter. The Indonesian wobegong, or Erectolobus leptolineatus, grows up to 3.9 feet and swims down to at least 66 feet. Diet and reproduction are unknown, and they are found off the Western Pacific in Indonesia and the Philippines. The spotted wobegong, or Erectolobus maculatus, grows up to 5.9 feet, swims down to 715 feet, and camouflage well into the rocks, ambushing bony and cartilaginous fish and benthic invertebrates. For reproduction, ovoviviparous with around 20 to 37 pups per litter. The dwarf spotted wobegong, or Erectolobus parvimaculatus, grows up to 2.9 feet and swims down to 443 feet, with diet and reproduction likely being typical for a wobegong. The ornate wobegong, or Erectolobus ornatus, grows up to 3.9 feet and swims down to 330 feet, living in the sandy, weedy bottoms to ambush crustaceans, bony fish, and cephalopods, and for reproduction are ovoviviparous with 12 pups per litter. The network wobegong, or Erectolobus reticulatus, grows up to 2.6 feet, swims down to 66 feet. They ambush bony fish, crustaceans, with the juveniles targeting cephalopods as they can fit into the crevices where cephalopods will often hide, and it's unknown if they lay eggs or give live birth. The northern wobegong, or Erectolobus wardi, grows up to 2.1 feet, swims down to 10 feet, and the shallow depth makes them great for aquariums, but not much is known about them in the wild. They likely usually feed on bony fish and benthic invertebrates and probably have ovoviviparous reproduction. In the cobbler wobegong, or Suterectus tentaculatus, grows up to 3 feet in length, potentially up to 9.8 feet by a potential false claim, and swims down to 115 feet. They are found in rocky reefs and likely ambush bony fish and benthic invertebrates with ovoviviparous reproduction. Next we are on the bamboo sharks with the nurse shark or Ginglimostoma serratum. They're solitary nocturnal animals that eat stingrays, mollusks, crustaceans, and even tunicates. Their feeding strategy is to use a suction that's more powerful than any aquatic vertebrate known. They grow up to 10.1 feet and possibly bigger than that. Their tolerant behavior makes them great for research, but they can still fight back by having fourth place on the most bites on humans. Reproduction is having the eggs hatch inside the female, so ovoviviparous, and takes around 18 months for roughly 21 to 29 pups to hatch. The Pacific nurse, or Ginglimostoma unami, grows up to 9.1 feet in length, and presumably dwells at the bottom of shallow reefs, with diet and reproduction likely being the same as the nurse shark. The tawny nurse shark, or Nebrius ferrigineus, grows up to a good 10 feet in length and swims down to 230 feet. Their sickle-shaped pectoral fins are what differentiates them and are more active swimmers. Their diet specializes in octopus, but will also feed on bony fish, crustaceans, sea urchins, and in emergencies, even coral. For reproduction, they're ovoviviparous while being the only carpet shark to have oophagy, which is strange because their eggs are much more developed when eaten compared to mackerel sharks. Captive females were reported releasing egg capsules, so they may be oviparous. 
the short tail nurse shark or pseudogingliostoma brevicaudatum grows up to 2.4 feet in length and has oviparous reproduction. The Burmese bamboo shark or Chiloskillum burmensis grows up to 1.9 feet in length, swims down to 108 feet with diet consisting of bony fish and benthic invertebrates and has oviparous reproduction. The gray bamboo or Chiloskillum griseum grows up to 2.4 feet in length, swims down to 328 feet with diet consisting of benthic invertebrates and likely has oviparous reproduction. The Hasselt's bamboo or Chiloskillum hasselti grows up to just under 2 feet and swims down to 39 feet with diet consisting of benthic invertebrates and have oviparous reproduction with paired eggs usually attached to seagrass. The slender bamboo or Chiloskillum indusum grows up to 2.2 feet and swims down to 295 feet in the sandy, muddy bottoms with diet consisting of bony fish and benthic invertebrates and have oviparous reproduction with paired eggs. The white-spotted bamboo or Chiloscillum plagiosum grows up to 3.1 feet and are found in shallow coral reefs. Diet consists of bony fish and benthic invertebrates especially crabs, by using their flattened back teeth. For reproduction, they are oviparous, with a case of a female laying three eggs without a male, so a potential case of parthenogenesis. It was seen in an aquarium, and instead of asexual reproduction, the specimen may have had both eggs and testes. Some have also been albinos, with about 1 in 10,000 estimated to be albino. The brown-banded bamboo, or Chiloscillum punctatum, grows up to 3.4 feet in length, swims down to 279 feet, and can survive out of the water for 12 hours for tidal purposes, with the diet consisting of shrimp, squid, and scallops slash bivalves, like clams. For reproduction, they are oviparous, and this specific species has been researched for DNA samples. The Arabian carpet shark, or Chiloscillum arabicum, grows up to 2.6 feet and swims down to 328 feet, diet consisting of bony fish and benthic invertebrates, and have oviparous reproduction, with males being extremely based by competing with each other males by biting off each other's claspers for competition. The zebra shark, or Stegostoma, Tigrinum. Despite the name, these sharks don't have stripes, but instead have tiny black spots all over the body. The juveniles have stripes, however, being the reason for its name. The stripes are likely there to make the animal mimic the poisonous banded sea snake. Even though the sharks are not poisonous themselves, it's a useful strategy for survival. They then grow out of it with spots as they don't need to worry about as many predators and indicate their age. These nocturnal animals grow up to 8.2 feet and hunt for mollusks, crustaceans, bony fish, and even sea snakes. For reproduction, the mother lays eggs, so oviparous, producing several dozen egg capsules, which are often anchored at rocks. They behave well in captivity to a point that divers can pet them and only lash out when harassed. They also have potential to use parthenogenesis. But with that, we conclude the carpet sharks. I know that one specific species is missing that you were probably expecting to be in this video, but that's for later.